Welcome, Wayne Carey, to the Cricketers Arms here in Port Melbourne. We're a long way from Wagga Wagga. It sure is. Not a long way from where I live now, but a long way from Wagga Wagga. How has Wagga produced so many sports people, Wayne? The community's based around their sport, and I think Wagga's a prime example of that. Uh, a lot of pubs in Wagga, <laughs> um, and, and obviously they, they do, they love their sport, and I think it's uh, a lot of variety, you know, touch rugby, rugby, rugby union, soccer, cricket, and, uh, and, and obviously, you know, uh, AFL. So uh, I, I fell in love with rugby as a, as a kid and then, uh, and then discovered or got introduced to, to AFL at a, at a young age and soon realised which one was the better sport. So decided that, uh, yeah, I just loved this game and, and wanted to play it. When you made that choice, Wayne, how old were you and what sort of footballer did you become? Well, I was, I was eight. But I played, so I played rugby um, before that. I started rugby when I was six um, and played rugby right through school. But um, discovered Aussie rules when I was eight. So my first, first year would have been under eight. Um, I'd, I'd, I played predominantly on ball. I wasn't a, I wasn't a big kid. So I liked, liked playing in the centre where, where the ball was. Um, so that was all through juniors until I left Wagga. Uh, left Wagga when I was 13 and went to Adelaide. And then I... I started to shoot up a little bit, I was a skinny kid, and then started to play a little bit more on ball and then, and then all of a sudden found myself as a centre half back um, a lot. Um, I did like the on ball, um, on ball positions because obviously you, know, you got to, to uh, run around and chase the ball a little bit more, but um, probably those few years in Adelaide were spent more at centre half back. So Sturlo was a famous Wagga boy, who else is from around that way? Yeah, well, Mark Taylor's a Leeton boy, uh, but we claim him. He went to school in Wagga, uh, but, but uh, Michael Slater was in my year at school. Uh, he was a year older, um, but he was a, uh, you know, obviously played cricket at school, but he's a very good hockey player uh, from my memories. Uh, but, yeah, no, they're, so they're the guys. Jeff Lawson was a fast bowler. He was, he was from Wagga. Um, but, yeah, no, loved and got to know Laurie Daly over time as well. Um, but he, he was a June E boy. Uh, but we claim him as well. Uh, so, yeah, so a lot of those little towns around Wagga, you know, a lot of those guys went to school in Wagga, so we, we do have some claim, claim over them. Where did you play your junior footy in Adelaide? There was a team called Malala. So my first six months were spent playing for, for the senior Colts. I, I was only 14, I was under 18, so I was, I was young, but I was playing senior Colts for them. And then my brother got me a run for North Adelaide. Uh, so I played Sandboy Cup. Uh, we won the Sandboy Cup, uh, which was sort of like a round robin, it's not a whole year. Uh, won the Sandboy Cup that year and then finished the rest of that year in the under-17s for, for North Adelaide and we won the Premiership uh, in 1987. So during those 80s years, Wayne, as you were growing up in football, who did you look at as a mentor? Who did you see as someone who would influence your, your style of play? Definitely my brother. Um, so I moved in with my brother when I was 13, when I went to Adelaide. He taught me to train hard. Um, so yes, you know, obviously, you know, I think every player that plays AFL footy has a degree of talent. Um, but I, I, I worked really hard and he taught me that I had to work hard if I was going to play footy at a high level. So I'd run seven kilometres every day after school and um, just never had a football out of my hands. Now, often people would say, um, you know, why, why didn't the wet bother you? Because every time it rained, and I mean poured, I would go out and kick the ball for hours and he'd kick the ball to me for hours in the wet. Um, you know, running back with the flight, picking the ball up off the ground in the wet. So all of those things. And then, you know, when it rained and, you know, I was playing AFL footy, it just it felt like home to me. I'd done so much work in those conditions. So um, he, he was a huge influence. And then Dennis Pagan, um, straight after that, under 19s, um, you know, for a year. Um, and then obviously he ended up being senior coach in 93 onwards and uh, you know, I guess he's mentoring. He, he knew how to get the best out of me. He knew I was, he knew I was a bit of a lad, uh, but he was able to harness that. Uh, he knew what buttons to push. Um, he, knew that, he knew that he could push me fairly hard too and, I, and he would get a response. Um, so, you know, Dennis Pagan certainly and, and my brother. So what were those buttons that he pushed? So, you know, I, I think the year was 1996 Obviously, we were one of the premiership favourites along with Sydney and a couple of others. And it was halfway through that year that he pulled me into the office and said, you know what, I, I, I reckon you can give us more. You know, I'd, I'd hate, 
and I'll use the name, he used Sammy Kekovic as an example, and he thought that Sammy wa wasted some of the enormous talent that he had, and he said, I, you know, I hope you don't have the same regrets. And I remember looking at him thinking, you know, geez, is this bloke, you know, I'm, I'm, I think at that stage I was leading all the so-called awards, and everyone was telling me how well I think I might have been Brownlow medal favourite again, and all of these, all of these different things. And I walked out of the office thinking, he's, he's kidding himself, isn't he? But within a couple of hours, I thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show him, I'm going to show him. And my second half of 96 was way better than my first half and ultimately we won the grand final and uh, Dennis worked his magic again. He, he knew what buttons to push and um, he, knew that, uh, he, he knew that I could, I guess, push myself a little bit harder and, and work harder and, and it worked. You, you and Dennis obviously had that trust. How did you build that trust with your own players as a young captain? I think you, ev you evolve as a leader. You know, there's, there's this great, in some ways, debate about whether you're born a leader or you, or you can be made a leader. Um, I think you definitely improve as, as you go. I think the hardest thing as a leader, especially at 21, um, is to, to go outside, to think outside yourself. I mean, when you form or in a particular game or it might have been a couple of games in a row where you're not playing great footy to, to not just think about yourself but think about others who, who might be struggling um, as well within that game, really difficult to do. Um, we are very lucky that when I was named captain, we didn't, lose, we didn't lose too many games. We got on, you know, for, for eight years in a row, we played finals. Seven of those in a row were preliminary finals. So, you know, it was, it was made easier because of that. It's not everyone's cup of tea. Some players grow with it, other players it, it, it really affects. Uh, we're seeing Bob Murphy, Rob Murphy at the moment for the Bulldogs, you know, what a, you know, and then the fact that he said he was ready. I mean, he's coming towards the end of his career playing great footy, but he was ready to do it. He knew he had to do it. And, uh, you know, what a great decision it was. And, you know, he'll probably hold it now for a couple of years, a few years. And, and then this young, talented team and these young, talented players that will, you know, grow under that and be ready for the job when they, when they get given it. So, so footy is a game which combines great skill with physicality and even brutality. When did you feel in your own game that physical presence was an important component? The aerobic fitness plus the anaerobic aspect and then the physicality of AFL footy. I mean, you know, you're running a marathon and you're getting knocked down having to get up and go again. It's not a, not a game like it in the world. And, um, I, have, I, I love that. I love that side of it. I mean, you know, you can be. I guess you, you you mightn't be in the contest, but if your fitness is to a level that it should be, and your physicality and, and you know your mental strength is there, then you know by the end of a end of a quarter, you can always um, you know I guess outwork your opponent. There's just so many aspects to our game that you know the physical strength in one on one, but then the the endurance to to outwork and outrun your opponent. You know, there's just so many ways. And I guess that's why our sport, you know, you can be five, 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 six, and you can be 211 centimetres and play our game. And I think that's what's great about our game. Is there a moment in a game early in your career where you really felt like physically you belonged out there? Yeah, my first full year was 1990. I came runner up best and fairest in that year behind Johnny Longmire, who kicked 98 goals. 2-7 in, in uh, that game against Collingwood, should have kicked 100. Um, but even then I didn't think that I you know, belonged at that level. I had a shoulder reco in, in 91, so all of a sudden self-doubt again. Um, so I got back at the start of 92 and played a full year that year and, and won the best and fairest that year for the Kangaroos. But there was a game right in the middle of that year and it was a state of origin game where I played for South Australia against Victoria. and. I remember looking around uh, the defence of the Victorian team and there was Paul Ruse, there was Gary Lyon, there was Steve Silvani. Uh, you looked around and went, wow, now this is, uh, this is where it's at. And obviously the South Australian team was littered with, you know, Steve Kernahan and the Jarmans and you know, all of those guys. But I, I got a couple of kicks in that game and I think it was from that time on that I thought, no, I, I can play at this level and I belong at this level because I thought if I could get a kick in a state of origin game amongst uh, that talent, um, I thought that going back to the Kangaroos was, uh, you know, I guess was a, a little bit below that in some way. So I, I felt I belonged after that.